Hello YouTube. This is part three of my efficient prepping series and we're going to cover location. Which I actually feel is probably the most important part of prepping. I didn't do it as video one because I thought I might be able to buy you guys a little bit of time getting food and water together. Okay. Because you can always boot that shit. All right. But location, location, location. It's just as important in prepping as it is in real estate. You, you really want to be in the right spot. You know, the best way to survive shit at the fan is to be where you want to be right now and to be living like you're already in it. You know, the world can go to hell in a handbasket if that's the case and you're going to hardly know. That's how we're living right now. Right? So... You know, I practice what I preach, guys. All right. Let's talk about it, though. We're going to cover where you're at right now, where you should be, if you're not where you should be. Okay. We're going to talk about having a bug out location um, from a couple different angles, and we're going to talk about caches. Okay. And I'm going to try and keep this as short as I possibly can for you guys. <clears throat> and remember, we're using the 80-20 rule in this, right? We want to focus on the 20% that's going to produce 80% of the results. And that's part of what considering location is. That it's part of the 20% that's going to produce 80% of the results. Like, if you're living for ground zero right now and prepping your ass off, you're still toast when the nukes hit, Right? So, location is part of the 20%. Let's get right into it. <clears throat> All right. You know, there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to shit hit the fan. What kind of shit hit the fan do you think's coming? You know, nuclear war? Because that's probably the worst one, full thermonuclear war. And if you plan for that, you're pretty much going to be good for everything else. Let's just go there. Okay? Let's go right there to the worst one. All right? Your current location, are there any nuke-worthy targets upwind of you? All right, because fallout, according to tests done in the U.S., nuclear tests, fallout will go 220 miles downwind. All right, do you have the ability to shelter yourself in place for a number of days? Do you need to worry about rampant fires? Because there will be nobody to put fires out caused by nukes, guys. Okay? Are your windows going to be blown out? Right? Nukes will blow windows out for miles around. Okay? Um, the prevailing winds in the U.S. usually are west or northwest winds. Ranger, you don't need to go out right now. Are you going to let them out? Okay. I'm having to sit down. Oopsies. You don't need to go out. Puppies, man. Especially Border Collies. Oof. He's always got to be doing something. And usually it involves interrupting my videos. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you know, prevailing winds in the U.S. are usually west-northwest winds. But check windy.com. Check it regularly. See where the winds are blowing in your area. And they're going to change throughout the year. This is a great time to just hit on this real quick. Guys, we should be paying attention to all those things that older, older generations paid attention to. Right? Like the wind. Okay? Can you smell the rain? Is the smoke staying close to the ground? What phase of the moon is it? What are the tides doing? What are the currents doing? Okay? We were sailors for three years. Me and my hottie over there. Alright, so we paid attention to all that shit. Or we still do. Okay? But it's it's a good thing to, to, to be aware of. Alright? Um... Yeah, because you don't want to get killed by fallout, do all this prepping, and all of a sudden you find out you're in a shitty place because then you were eh, you just didn't do the 20% that's going to produce the 80% of results, right? Now, can you move? Are you in a position where you can pick up and get your ass and your family someplace else? For a lot of us, the answer is going to be no. And you know what that means? Prep anyways. Keep prepping. Doesn't freaking matter. There's no, uh, there's no for sure of anything that's going to happen, right? There's no guarantee that you're going to get nuked. There's no guarantee your city's going to get nuked. 
right? There's no guarantee that the winds will be blowing in exactly your direction and covering you in fallout. There's no guarantee. So you're still better off buying this shit now than not having it, okay? If you can move, where do you want to go? Well, you want to go someplace that is mostly remote, all right? You don't want to be a 30-minute drive from the big city, guys, because the Golden Horde is going to be knocking on your freaking doorstep Days after this shit goes down, they're going to be stealing from you. It's going to be bad. So you want to be more remote, the better. Okay. Our nearest neighbor here is three miles away. All right. To give you an idea. And I feel that we are plenty remote enough. Okay. Um... So, yeah, that's that's definitely where you want to be as far as the considerations, obviously, like water, right, infrastructure shit, okay? Um, but you don't need to worry about all that stuff right now. If, if, if you relocate, start buying food, start storing water, you're golden, okay? Just do that and build it up to the degrees that I've talked about in previous videos, okay? Um... Let's talk about another option, okay? This is going to be a lot more affordable for a lot of us than picking up the whole family and moving them, all right? You can buy a piece of remote property, and you can store food and water on it. You don't have to be there. And that's the place where you intend to bug out to, okay? And it's a lot of times it's a lot cheaper to buy an acre or 10, right and to do that than it is to pick up everything and move and to drive your ass two hours each way to work and back every day so you can keep the same job you've got now right so i would definitely consider that and there are some things we need to discuss about it okay and the first one would be that if you're going to do that option you want to purchase property where you can do what you want to do on it and have it largely um, unobserved, all right? You don't want people to see what you're doing from the road. You don't want neighbors to see what you're doing from their property. You don't want that shit. Trust me, guys, okay? Um, our cabin, we have a piece of remote pro property, has a cabin on it. You cannot see it, okay? You can't see it from the road. You can't see it from adjacent properties. You'd have to be trespassing to know it's there. That's what you're looking for. There is this one little spot down the road where if all the leaves are off the trees and all the leaves are off everything, you might see it if your head's in the right place at the right time. But other than that, you, you can't, okay? That's what you're going for, all right? Um, vermin. We need to talk about that too real quick because if you're storing all your food and all your water in a place like that, and if you've got bad pack rats... And shit like that, they will mess your shit up. So you need to have a place that you're willing to go out and check on. All right. The less obvious that someone's doing something there, the better. Right? You put in some fancy road. Curious people might walk up it if the shit's gone down. Okay? Or just shitty people in the area in which you live. Okay? I have literally held people at gunpoint before that trespassed on my property. Right, and so that that shit will happen. It's a concern. Okay, so you wanna you wanna be unnoticeable as possible. Okay, just just keep that in mind. Okay, next let's talk about your actual bug out spots because it doesn't matter how prepped you are. It doesn't matter what situation you're in as far as preparedness goes, guys. Like, you need to have bug-out spots. And are they the right one? Are they good spots? Okay, now what makes a good spot different from a bad spot? A lot of us are like, hey, we're just... Remember that small lake that we used to ski on? You know, there's native trout in it. Like, that's where we're going. Okay? With your buddies and shit, right? That's a shitty place to go. You might be like, oh, there was never that many people there. Dude, there are probably thousands of people 
that are either planning to go there or thousands of people that are going to show up there because they've been there before and they know where it is. All right. You got to think about that. And bugging out at the edge of any body of water, unless it's really in a gnarly spot that's hard to get to, is probably a bad idea. Do you want to be on the shore of a river, lake, even a pond, large pond? You know, is that where you want to be? I don't think that's where you want to be. A creek, right? You're way more likely to get found that way. All right. It might be smarter to bug out to an area near water, but to haul water as you need it. Okay? Haul that shit at night if you have to. All right? Think about it. Be safe, guys, especially during the first three months after the shit goes down. My personal perspective is that the first three months is going to be the really gnarly time frame, time period. Okay. I want you to think about this too for bug out spots. Okay. And even if you're buying remote property, right? A lot of us, we're going to use bug out spots as an example. We're like, oh yeah, that, so that lake that you used to go skiing at, don't want the native trout. Super nice in the summer, man. It's like 80 degrees. Meanwhile, it's like 106 down in the valley. You know what I mean? Like, you're getting away from that heat, getting up there, it's all nice. Yeah, we're going to bug out there. But you don't realize that it gets 10 feet of snow in the wintertime. And all the big game leaves. Right? Think about that shit. And what you really should be thinking about is, what did the natives in your area do? How did they live, guys? Because they were like pre-Iron Age, man. They were. There were Stone Age cultures until the European settlers started selling them iron trade goods. Okay? They had stone tools. So the way they lived was like the most basic way you can survive in your area. Okay? So in my area, the natives had a winter camp. Okay, where they lived in like small earth lodges, effectively. Okay, they had their fires there, they stayed there. And then they had summer camps, right, where they would go to certain areas when the fish were spawning and would hunt the fish. And they'd go to other places when it got really hot out and they'd be up there, okay, which was higher altitude areas, those beautiful places that you like to go skiing in the summer, right? Okay, and then they would go to other locations and in the summertime in the in the good half of the year they would sleep on elevated platforms because of poisonous snakes right so you got to look into that shit dudes you have to and you have to consider that as part of your plan because what you think is your number one bug out spot right now might only be a spot that's suitable for half the year maybe the native cultures went up there during the good half of the year but they went somewhere else during the shit half of the year. Where do the deer in your area winter? Are they there year round? Or do they go someplace else and they winter in a certain spot? Right? That's a big one, guys. A big one. You're welcome. That's a good tip. Okay? I'm sure some of y'all thought about that shit, though. All right? <clears throat> so... You know, your final bug out spot, you want to be away from other people. Hopefully, you've got some, like, magical spring that's out in the woods and nobody knows about it, you know. But that's not most of us, right? Okay. And um, not realistic for most people. Okay. Let's get into caches because a lot of people that are watching these videos, even if you're prepping, Right, there's going to come a point in time where you're going to have to bug out. Or you might be forced to bug out. Okay. So, when you're bugging out, you're either taking what you can carry with you or what you can fit in your vehicle. And your goal is to get to a location and survive the hard way. Right now, 
we're gonna you're basically going out to live like the natives live but with some technology added but at the same time they were part of large groups that didn't just leave everything they had behind pretty much right no they'd been doing this as part of their plan they're following their plan yeah of course there were hard times and there was famine and there was wars and there was shit like that they had to deal with okay which is basically going to be what you're dealing with if you're bugging out and leaving all your shit behind right so what caches do is they allow you to store the goods you need already where you want to go and all you got to do is get there and it's already there you don't have to transport it during shit hit the fan right or when you're all out of food and water at home or almost nearly out now all of a sudden you got to pack the rest of it with you okay so caches are big i feel that they are they offer a large advantage okay and uh, all of us should be, even those of us that are very, very prepped, should be looking into and planning to cash goods and caching goods in at least one possible bug out spot. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say you really got to go with one. And it should be wisely chosen, right? You don't want to, it shouldn't be on a flood plane. Obviously, it shouldn't be. And I'm not just talking about your bug out spot, but I'm talking about the location of a cache, right? Shouldn't be at the edge of a river or a lake or a pond. It shouldn't be in an area downstream of a dam. Guys, you got to remember, it's like water has been diverted, right? By modern man. And the government usually is the ones that are maintaining control of that water but if they lose control where is that water going to go what is it going to do right last thing you want to do is get to your cash spot and find out there was a big ass dam you know up the way that blew and now all your shit's flooded you can't even get to it right it's freaking 40 feet underwater last thing you want to happen okay so take a look at the area you know and, and like I said, it's worth investing time in this whole location deal because it's going to produce a lot of results for you, all right? Now, when it comes to caching goods, where do you want to cache them? You want to cache them at an elevated site. Now, I'm not talking highly elevated, right? You don't want to be on the top of this hilltop where you're skylighting yourself. You know what that is? That's where people down below can see your silhouette up against the sky gonna know exactly where you are you don't want that okay you want a lower but elevated location right and you want to bury your goods below the frost line that means you're gonna to have to do a little bit of looking a little bit of googling find out how low the deep the frost line is in your area you want to bury these goods in a container if you watched part two about food, I explained to you, you can get good containers cheap at secondhand stores. Okay, those will work just fine. Uh, and you want to, so ideally any bug out spot or cash spot is gonna have a source of water not far from it. Okay, this is gonna help you a lot in the sense that now you don't have to cash water. Okay, all you gotta do is cash food, okay? or other supplies maybe cash some ammunition some medical supplies right okay so um yeah you definitely want to have a water source within a reasonable distance from you okay so you're gonna bury dig a hole you're gonna bury your goods in a bin you could use garbage bags i don't know that i would recommend that um but if you're pinched for cash, you know what? You're better to bury your shit in freaking garbage bags and in a couple years you're out there getting access to your stuff and you had a few cans go bad because you got moisture in the bag or whatever. All right. Then to not having done anything. Okay, you're probably better off that way. Um, 
yeah, below the frost line, like I said, because it's less likely moisture is going to get down to it and your stuff's not going to freeze. And then how do you mark a cash spot? Okay. What you don't do is put something over top of it that a dog would screw with, like a cattle skull, for example, you know, or humans would screw with. Okay. A stick, some branches. Right, you don't mark it with that shit. You want to mark it with something that nobody's going to move, such as a heavy rock. I'm talking like a 40, 50 pound rock. Yeah, it's going to be a bitch getting it over there. And obviously, if you're in a place with lots of 40, 50 pound rocks around, that's not the best marker. Okay? But it is if you're in a place that doesn't have a lot of that. Right? And then, at the same time, you need to make sure you can find that cache and you can find it regularly. What you do is you go back to it. And, guys, it's not going to hurt you to bring a masonry hammer with you and mark the rock on the bottom of it. It's not going to hurt you to do it, okay? Are people going to be out there turning over 40, 50-pound rocks for looking for cache points? No. No. They're going to have everything else on their mind. Okay, unless they saw you burying it there or they were with you when you buried it there. And guess what? Don't freaking bring anybody else unless you're part of a group. And then your group members need to know where that cash is. Okay, because your ass might not ever make it there, but it might mean the difference between life and death for some of them. Okay, but you guys get the idea. You're all you all are smart. Okay, find a way to mark it. Find a way to know exactly where it is and have the means to dig it up when you get there. Does that mean hump a freaking e-tool on your pack? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It means that maybe you can leave the old busted head of a shovel under some brush nearby or something like that. Okay, or a garbage can lid that you can dig with, especially if your ground's not hard. If your ground's hard, that shit's eventually going to get hard again over top of that cash okay all right dudes i i think i'm pretty much done i guarantee you i forgot some stuff uh, and i can make these as long as possible like seriously i could talk about this shit for hours but as i've already discussed i know your time is precious to you and uh, i'm gonna go spend some time with my sweetie over here now that i'm finished okay She's going to cook me a Wagyu steak tonight. She's a bomb-ass cook, too. Hell good. All right, so like, share, subscribe. Okay, think about uh, supporting the channel. It could help me out. I actually just found this. I'll show you guys. My buddy gave this to me years ago. It needs some new batteries. Okay. Uh, but this is a big step in the right direction. I do need a laptop I can edit with. My wife's laptop is... Uh, just for word and writing. It's, can't handle editing. Okay, but we're getting there. Okay, so consider supporting the channel on Patreon if you like what I'm doing and you appreciate the content. And uh, I'm giving some snares away to some of my patrons. Super stoked about that. Pretty soon, guys. I know you all are watching the videos. I think I'm going to draw a name out of a hat on Saturday. Maybe Sunday. Okay. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy the series. Leave some comments down below too. Tell me what I didn't think about in the video, what I didn't say in the video. And um, yeah, let's kind of keep the dialogue going and see if we can make all this shit better. Okay, see you guys in the next one.